ExoMars is a European Mars rover that was supposed to launch this year. This did not end up happening. Right now the rover is sitting in storage in Italy instead. During the ESA Open Day at Aztec I had the unique opportunity to talk to the project scientist of ExoMars, ask him a few questions and learn more about the initiative. Hi, thank you very much for agreeing to uh, talk to me. Could you briefly uh, tell us uh, who you are and what you do with ExoMars? Okay, so my name is Jorge Varro and I'm the project scientist for the mission. That means I try to coordinate what it is that we will be doing with the rover once we land on Mars. And before that, I have worked with a scientist providing the instruments and analyzing the data to come up with uh, the way that we intend to use the mission. Great, so what's the primary uh, goal of this rover? Do you have a specific scientific mission that has not been done on other rovers in mind? Yes, this rover is extremely special. You see that the body of the rover is dominated by this black box at the front. That is a drill that is able to penetrate two meters into the ground. Mm -hmm. This is extremely important for the scientific objective of this mission, which is to search for traces of life. Okay, so kind of like on insight, but it will work. <laughs> Not quite, because insight wanted to measure the thermal gradient, that is the mm -hmm. coming from the interior of the planet. So the mole carried with it a cable that was five meters long with thermal couples. So the measurement was relatively simple. Here instead mm -hmm. we're trying to collect a sample from below and bring it up to be analyzed in the analytical laboratory that we have inside the world. Okay, so we know that, unfortunately, uh, Exxon are set to be delayed. Uh, do you think uh, you will manage to get to the next uh, window for launch? Because I know the rover is ready. The question is, how fast can you integrate with the launcher? The rover is ready, the carrier is ready, and the lander is ready. But it is a lander we built with Russia. So to launch at the next launch window, which would be in 24, mm -hmm. we are already too late. We could okay. launch in 26, but we would need to launch with Russia. So the programmatic and geopolitical conditions would need to be right for that. What we are trying to do in the present climate is to reorganize the mission to launch in 2028 mm -hmm. with our own lander. Okay, that's great. I had another question, kind of not related directly to ExoMars, but I was always wondering why... Uh, it makes sense for one rover, the Perseverance, to gather samples and then for another rover to pick them up. Why would you fly two rovers to the same area of a new planet? But what do you mean? You mean the sample fetching rover? Yeah, the sample return from Mars. Yes. By the, I'm asking because in Mars sample return we have mm -hmm. Perseverance and we were going to fly a European sample fetching rover as a way to collect the samples. That is no longer happening. So the US is looking at uh, having helicopters on mm -hmm. the lander. And so Perseverance would bring the samples to the lander that then will shoot them back uh, up into Mars orbit. And the helicopters will be there as backup. That's a new plan. Okay. Okay, but still in the works. Yes. So, the one thing we can say is that the samples from Perseverance will be great for geology and for dating, mm -hmm. but not so good for organic chemistry. Why? Because they're being collected at the surface where ionizing radiation is the strongest. So, for going below this distraction horizon, you want a mission like this with a deep drill. And that's what's special about this mission. Okay, and are there uh, any uh, missions planned, or would it be a part of some of uh, this mission to try to verify the contested results of the Viking probes? That th there was a huge debate regarding if they, it's possible that they found life or not. And they said that we could not have 
certainty with those results. Are we trying to confirm that in any way? Yes and no. We are looking for life here in a different way. So you have to understand that at the time of the Viking landers in the 1970s, people were absolutely convinced there were microorganisms in mm -hmm. the So the way they set up their experiments was to try to detect the, the products of the metabolic activity of microbes in the surface. And of the three experiments they had, two said no, and one said yes, very emphatically yes. But then the, what the scientific community considered the deciding thing was that a fourth instrument that had not been designed to uh, search for life, which was the, the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, mm -hmm. the fact that it didn't find organic molecules um, through the, the context in the direction of there was no life. So, we don't know for sure what it was that happened uh, at the Viking Lander sites, but we think it had to do more with the oxygen. Okay, thank you very much. I think we need, I need to slowly go. I assume okay. we can stay here. I hope it works out for you. Uh, <laughs> thank you very you much. Showing it too. Mars is great. Thank you. I, I, I'm sure they will all know. <laughs> Unfortunately, this conversation had to be a bit rushed and ended abruptly, as I met Mr. Varro at the very end of the open day, about 5 minutes before the closing time. Nevertheless, it was very interesting. Huge thanks to Mr. Varro for agreeing to talk to me. I hope that in spite of all of the difficulties, ExoMars will be a successful mission. If you want more content from the ESA open day, I have a video on my day there already on the channel. If you would like to know more about the European Space Agency, I also have an explainer on that. Thanks for watching, leave a like and a subscription if you enjoyed it. See you later.